Yep. So as you can tell, my first ever YouTube introduction didn't really go to plan. In fact, the uh, audio from this clip somehow managed to die on its way back from Goodwood uh, to home. Literally been in for a matter of minutes. I've just cut off my wristband from the day and I thought, you know what, I'll get straight into editing the video. No need to find that that happened. But anyway, what I was trying to say was is that it's the uh, the first time I've been at Goodwood in nearly a decade and unsurprisingly to those who've been following the racing blog or myself uh, for a while now, my attention was fixed on the Sports Car Legends batch which included cars from endurance racing past and present such as the Sauber C9, the Porsche 962C driven by Mario Andretti up the hill as well this weekend and also just a McLaren F1 GTR thrown in there for good measure. There's one particular car that uh, my eyes were fixed on, and I was looking forward to getting up close and personal with it and have spent the day in somewhat of awe of this machine, and I'm really excited to give you guys a little walk around of it. So let's hand back to Tim at Goodwood a matter of hours ago, who's going to walk around the car for you. So here it is then, the Glickenhaus SCG 007 Le Mans hypercar. This is a car that will have been filling your social media feeds for the entirety of 2021. It definitely has mine. And I followed the story from it being a concept drawing back in 2019 to now actual race car. And this is the race car that will be heading off to Monza this week to compete in the six hours. It's also the car that made the debut for the Glickenhaus team in the WEC at Portimao a few weekends ago. A beautiful car in my opinion. It's part of this new hypercar class that I'm sure you're all familiar with. And it reminds me of a lot of other previous Le Mans cars. So starting at the front, a fairly flat nose section. It reminds me of the, the Lola's T70s from times gone by. And that retro look carries on in the front corners, inside the uh, front wheels, these two nostril aero vents, if you like, something akin to the Toyota GT1 or the TSO20 a car that was made from the GT1 area, which was kind of the inspiration for this new hypercar class that we have now. We then of course have these uh, quite dramatic grills behind the, the front wheels to help tidy up the airflow, the messy air that can spill off front tyres. My favourite thing, gold rims, love gold rims, very retro. Moving down the side, we obviously have this lovely air channel here that feeds into the engine at the back and a nice look into the cockpit from the side here as well. Really tight fit in here. There's, I mean, it's maximum a metre or so across. The uh, driver seat in at the moment is for Roman Dumas, who's been taking the car up the hill, I think twice already this weekend. If we have a look inside, plenty of buttons going on on this center control panel. The things you need like lights, especially at Le Mans when you're going through 24 hours of, uh, of day to night, etc. Also, we've got buttons on there for turning on the windscreen heater, something that people wouldn't think that race cars have, but we do have them just to stop fogging, etc. and losing vision. And then of course, the highly detailed racing wheel with the big uh, screen in the center for drivers to keep on top of everything that's going on with tire pressures, uh, splits to their best lap times, also fuel levels and alarms in case anything's going wrong. This car though, not too much has gone wrong with it in its first appearance in the WEC, a minor clutch issue, which the uh, engineers uh, told me a few moments ago, they got on top of straight away. So not too much uh, going wrong with this car. So hopefully, not too much flashing up on the wheel when the drivers are going round. Quite nice to see Glickenhaus fans getting their names on the cars that will be racing at Le Mans and in the World Endurance Championship. <laughs> Moving towards the back, we have probably the most spectacular rear wing assembly we've seen in recent sports car racing. Something more akin to a fighter jet, if you like, with all these fins atop the uh, rear wing main plane. And then, of course, round the back, this shape that uh, it, 
really follows the styling guides of other Glickenhaus race cars like the 004C and 003C. Looking at this rear wing actually in the flesh, it is pretty massive. I mean, it comes up to me, probably it's a foot shorter than me. It's really quite big. Something that really the Group C races like the Peugeot 905 and the Jag XJR 14, they would be jealous of a rear wing setup like this. It's quite spectacular. And actually seeing it in the flesh, this car, looks good doesn't it i'm really uh, really into it so hopefully a good next race for this car the number 709 driven by roman dumas richard westbrook and ryan briscoe at uh, monza and then looking forward to seeing it go racing at le mans in a few months time yeah.